day, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a recording of the presentation for the webinar uh, that we do for in case there is technical difficulties regarding the live stream. First, I would like to introduce uh, the speakers for today. Myself, Rolf Janssen van Rensberg. I represent Altec and AST in Africa. Secondly, Didier Maurice, the CTO for AST. And then Cesar Melendez, the representative for Altec and AST in the Americas. Uh, before I start, I also want to remind the audience that there will be an answer session after the presentation where we will address written questions questions if there are any. The topic of this webinar is Big Data Analytics and Process Optimization. It is based on a paper that was created for EFRS in Turkey and it is a meta study of Big Data Analytics as well as an outlay of the solutions that AST Big Data Analytics can provide. I will take us through some history and general introduction of Big Data followed by Cesar on what is Big Data Analytics and some general applications, and then DDA will present the AST BDA use cases and solutions. What is Big Data? Modern processes are generating vast amounts of data, whether this is analysis data from limb systems, uh, financial or, or cost data through ERP systems, uh, process control and sensor data from PLCs and SCADAs, uh, production and scheduling data from MES systems, or heat the storage data into historians. This, this data can accumulate to a large extent. How can this be of value? For it to be useful, it has to be collected, codified, and analyzed in a sensible way. Truly massive amounts of data is colloquially referred to as big data. Everything around us leaves or can leave large digital footprints. So it can refer to anything, whether it be medical records or health measurements, market data, uh, it can be traffic or movement data, and it can also be gen data generated, uh, as before mentioned, from industrial processes. Originally, big data was defined as reaching or extending available resources. These resources can be seen as storage, de uh, uh, storage device sizes or memory, as well as processing power. Of course, these resources expand rapidly over time, as can be seen in the illustration on this side about storage but also Moore's law stating that the computing power will double every two years and which largely, has largely been followed. Naturally, the amount of data generated also followed suit. But the modern definition of big data is about more than just volume. It can be categorized in six Vs. The first is obviously volume. That is the amount of data from a myriad of sources, as mentioned before. It can be the variety, uh, and this is the types of data, whether it be structured, semi-structured, or unstructured data. Uh, the velocity of the data, which is the speed at which the data is being generated. Uh, the veracity of the data, this is the degree to which big data can be trusted. The value of the data, and this is the ultimate business value of the data collected. And the variability. That's the ways in which big data can be used and formatted. Now that we have introduced what big data is, we move on to the concept of big data analytics, or BDA, the core of today's presentation. Big data analytics is a set of tools, which is software, techniques, like machine learning and data science, and resources which we can, we can define as data lakes in cloud computing, which address and solve the question of big data. Now I give over to Cesar to expand on the concept of BDA. Thank you, Rolf. Thank you. Good morning to all. Uh, just uh, BDA with machine learning, uh, we can 
we can say that uh, this is not uh, new. This has been present for um, many years ago. We can say that uh, back in 59, 1959, one person has published some studies. And they realized that machine learning, uh, it is possible to learn. Machines can learn from uh, previous errors. So this is uh, some kind of uh, learning. So yeah, this is the, the way it is called machine learning. Uh, one of the earliest uh, examples of non-numerical computation. Uh, it was the first instances of the principle of machine learning to perform uh, simple tasks. Uh, back in 1950, there have been many functional definitions of this concept, machine learning. Different authors emphasize the different aspects of machine learning, such as process, for example, utilities, uh, on the other hand, stress function of pattern recognition. Machine learning could turn abstract uh, thoughts into physical operation. And the most uh, important thing is that machine learning is deciphering patterns and can use the pattern recognition to predict future values. So, according to these uh, elements, we can say that uh, fundamentally, machine learning is some kind of outgrowth of the intersection of computer science and statistics that aims automatically to learn, recognize patterns, and make intelligent decisions based on existing data. Another way to restart uh, this uh, machine learning is turning data into information. This is very important because the, the, the data can be transferred, can be converted into information, use, useful information. Cloud computing, uh, as it normally was defined already, it was stated, big data can be defined in terms of being bigger than normal standard IT resources. So cloud, computia, cloud computing actually represents a, some cost-effective way to handle big amount of data, big amount of information. Uh, so cloud computing can be defined as a delivery of computing services over the internet to offer faster innovation, flexible resources, and economies of scale. This is very important. According to the uh, cloud computing benefits, include uh, savings on cost, productivity increase, speed and efficiency, performance, and security. BDA use in general applications. This is a good example of a uh, application of the big data analytics, uh, probably the one of the most uh, useful uh, application of this is in sports. Different sports has different uh, statistics, so this kind of uh, analysis from statistics from uh, baseball, football, uh, uh, car races, uh, it is very, very uh, supported by this kind of uh, big data analytics because uh, the statistics are very good, uh, uh, viable for everybody, so it is possible to do this kind of analysis. Um, athletes, for example, in the Olympics can use analytics to define the areas of improvement, how many uh, wins, uh, how many goals, uh, etc. Teams can use it as a competitive edge. Uh, and the benefits in sports is more easy, more clearly defined, but also more uh, clearly defined problems and challenge. This is another application of the uh, uh, big data analytics, the food industry. Here's where uh, BDA use uh, very good information for uh, 
uh, for uh, continuous improvement. Given the size of this important industry, it is no surprise that uh, there is an very, very much abundance of data generation from many, many different sources. So BDA is used for uh, anything from uh, generating recipes, recipes for uh, food preparation. Restaurants are using BDA to optimize process, big, big, uh, big chains of restaurants to, to optimize process, identifying best practice and put it in place. And the cloud uh, is making BDA more accessible to more entities as well, not only the big chains. BDA is implemented for uh, food supply chains and in the production of food to develop applications and procedures that help uh, us increase food safety due to better decision making. Uh, big data in uh, healthcare. This is another very important, very strong application of uh, big data analytics. Uh, the application of uh, big data in healthcare has a lot of positive and also has uh, life saving outcomes. Uh, there is a vast quantity of information created by the digitalization and everything that gets consolidated and analyzed by specific technologies. And this applying to the healthcare, it will specific health data uh, help to uh, populate and potentially help prevent, for example, epidemics or pandemics, cure disease and cut down costs, etc. cetera. Uh, treatment models have been changed uh, and driven data doctors. For example, they want to understand as much as they can about a patient as an early stage of the of the um, disease, for example. So this uh, utilizing uh, healthcare uh, KPIs also uh, prevents a more uh, complicated situation. Prevention is better than cure. And managing managing to draw a comprehensive picture of patients will let insurance provide a tailored package. The use of VDA and machine learning has been in use for a long time also in this uh, health care. Uh, in, in 2001, for example, uh, one person, Jim Haxby, brought machine learning to brain imaging. He realized that voxel in neutral activity could serve as dimensions different dimensions in a kind. Machine learning gave methods to interpret this massive amount of data generated to give doctors sensible information, sensible and valuable information. Now I turn to uh, Didier. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cesar. Uh, now that we have all this uh, general information about big data uh, analytics and the use in our daily life in two bracket, uh, we can go into more into the industrial part of the presentation. Uh, the first question is, uh, about how to manage the complexity of uh, industrial processes. As we we'll explained explain at the beginning, uh, we have to handle various sources of data, uh, but also uh, to satisfy uh, various types of users uh, and to handle a uh, lot of use cases. And for this, uh, the solution is uh, to put all these data and all these application in, in the cloud and uh, to put in some links between the data uh, that we call business context. Uh, and this is all the configuration of the data lake uh, where uh, we put all the knowledge 
uh, of the people regarding the uh, your process, the industrial processes, uh, in, into bracket to link the data together in order to be able to uh, run uh, proper analysis uh, for many use cases and have different uh, uh, users using the same uh, data lake. So, uh, when the data lake is configured, then all the data become available uh, live and uh, all sources at the same time and linked together. This enables uh, the analyzing tools to find the more relevant parameters to optimize the targets. Uh, very often find expecting unexpected solution. I will come late, later on this specific point. Uh, and uh, at the same time, improve uh, process engineers' uh, investigations, uh, being them faster, being them uh, more relevant, and uh, probably more in-depth in investigation. Uh, also, what is uh, very good, you can automatically uh, update all the KPIs, all the dashboards, uh, Anytime one single data is coming in, all the dashboards uh, of everybody will be uh, updated automatically. And uh, these fast live KPI uh, enables faster and more precise decision making process. Uh, all these uh, dashboards uh, can be tailored infinitely, let's say, and uh, it can also control automatically some uh, recipe. The dashboard can be controlled depending on the recipe you are producing for control limits and uh, automatic control limits and these kind of things. Uh, and this all together creates a very interesting information platform for managers, for engineers, and also for uh, people uh, making decisions in the control rooms. Regarding the project life length, uh, you can imagine that uh, all this cannot be done overnight, but basically there are several steps, constant steps in the uh, project. The first one is uh, obviously collecting the data from the various sources. Uh, you may have uh, from one to 20, maybe more sources of data, and all has to be gathered all together and uh, sent to the data lake and uh, configure the data lake to link all these sources of data together. Uh, some data can be uh, time-related, other uh, batch-related, or whatever. Uh, but still, uh, immediately at the beginning of this stage, uh, you can still have some uh, saving, not waiting for the end of the project, I will explain uh, in a couple of slides. Uh, then the next step is to start visualizing, uh, developing dashboards, developing reporting, uh, SPC, and all these kind of things automatically updated. So this makes uh, actually uh, real faster decision making, faster control of uh, of the process, and then comes the real analysis uh, of uh, of the KPI, and uh, the purpose of this is to make the process more stable or to find some areas of improvement to optimize the KPIs. And the last but not least uh, step is to start. Uh, anticipating the variations uh, of the process, depending on uncontrolled parameters, such as uh, weather, for example. Uh, and all of this uh, you get step after step when developing the data lake and uh, uh, BDA uh, implementation. Let's go through a few examples 
uh, that uh, have happened actually in the past uh, at each step of the development of uh, of implementation of 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 the the, the tool. Uh, as said earlier, uh, all necessary that data are located in various databases, uh, SCADA, historians, etc. And uh, various types of data, some are time related, some are batch related, some are only samples or whatever. Uh, all these data needs to be linked together in the data lake uh, with either traceability information or uh, time calculation information. And this is a great job and this is also very important because uh, when this is done, already the, the, all the data become available and linked together uh, in a single place. Uh, here you start with a lot of time saving in the investigation. If you look at the Six Sigma uh, publications, you will see that generally speaking, uh, gathering the data uh, and preparing the data before investigation is more or less uh, above 50% of the total time of any uh, Six Sigma project, which is uh, a huge loss of time, basically. So uh, having the data immediately available uh, all together, and all together is very important, uh, makes you the capability to make twice the amount of analysis and improvement project. Let's talk about traceability. Uh, traceability is the, the key for a good and efficient data lake. Uh, traceability between the data together, how to link uh, the different sources of data, but also traceability of the uh, various steps of the process. So I would say vertical and horizontal uh, traceability. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, in a machining shop, uh, we were able to link uh, the resharpening of carbide inserts uh, with the final 3D measurements. So very first step to completely final step, which is more or less uh, one month lead, actual lead time. Uh, and uh, let's say just analyzing this uh, because of the traceability, uh, the people were able to uh, understand that the piece that uh, were machined with resharpened insert uh, were had worse characteristics compared to the pieces made with non resharpened uh, inserts. And uh, not the least, uh, the last piece made with non resharpened was better than any piece uh, with resharpened uh, inserts. So uh, after un understanding this uh, fact, people uh, slowly uh, stopped resharpening the inserts and increase the number of pieces machined with standard non-resharpened uh, new inserts. And in fact, at the end, uh, they completely stopped resharpening and did three times more pieces uh, without resharpening. And uh, consequently, they save obviously uh, the uh, cost of resharpening, but also improve the quality uh, by decreasing the number of uh, PCs out of control by about 5%. Uh, another point that may surprise lots of people, uh, but people that are running with this big data are not any more uh, surprised, is that very often we can find very unexpected sources of, of improvement. 
The basic reason for that is uh, most of the critical parameters are under control because uh, the uh, industries know what are the most critical parameters and they are put well under control. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it means that less than 10%, maybe sometimes even less than 2 or 3% of the parameters are scrutinized by the crew uh, because they are considered as less critical. And in fact, BDA, the BDA tools uh, analyze 100% of the parameters 100% of the time, which means any deviation can be uh, pointed out uh, or any parameter that is non-critical but still important can be pointed out. And this is very important in the analysis. Just to give you an example, we, we could go through more, but uh, to give you an example, uh, in uh, a blast furnace or at the step just before the blast furnace uh, in the I-1 or agglomeration, uh, some coal was used to burn the I-1 or and uh, as you see, it was considered as a, a low interest raw material. And analyzing all the parameters of the process, it uh, pointed out that many par critical parameters were well under control, but then these uh, less critical parameter uh, was, uh, had some influence on the quality and the productivity. And just by pointing this out, pointing this out, sorry, uh, the plant was had improved the sizing of the coal, and then immediately the productivity in, increased by about three percent. Just new parameters coming in uh, when the critical ones are well under control. Uh, another advantage of uh, the big the big data analytics is to be able to implement smart data. What means smart data? Basically, uh, to make it short, smart data uh, is a dynamic calculation of uh, KPI made out of data from various sources. Meaning it can be the cost coming from SAP and the consumption coming from uh, SCADA. And this, you can mix together just to give you a, an example, and dynamically. Uh, and an example of this, uh, I saw in an EAF, uh, as usual, they try to decrease the kilowatt hour per metric ton of steel. And uh, after some investigation, they changed some parameters and actually reduced the kilowatt hours per metric ton. Uh, Unfortunately, this, this did not turn into uh, visible savings on the PNA. So, uh, after some new uh, thought about, uh, about this, uh, the process engineer calculated uh, a smart data uh, which was reflecting more or less uh, the bottom line of the PLN, PNL uh, as a KPI and try to improve this bottom line with the process parameters. And at the end of the day, uh, to make a long story short, uh, the solution was to increase the kilowatt hours per metric, to metric ton amongst other parameters. And all these parameters together uh, were decreasing the amount of slag to improve the yield. And uh, you know, improving the yield uh, always turns into huge saving. In that case, it went up above 1 million euro savings per year. And finally, uh, as I said, last step uh, of this kind of implementation is uh, anticipating uh, variations. Variations can come from 
uh, uncontrolled uh, parameters uh, such as weather or whatever, or changes in the raw material or, or whatever. And something that was implemented in a paper plant uh, some years ago, uh, this paper plant had, was running several paper machines completely independently and seen from the power supply, uh, basically the boilers, uh, the start and the stop of the paper machine was seen as random, as well as the weather. Uh, and uh, connecting the uh, state, the status of the paper machines uh, to the boilers, uh, they were able to link uh, various status uh, to the future uh, load of each machine and consequently uh, adding all the machines together, the future load of the boilers. Uh, having this uh, future calculation uh, into bracket like a crystal ball, uh, decision of starting, stopping new boilers uh, watch was much much more accurate and much faster. Uh, and consequently, they improve the usage and the yield of the boilers, uh, turning into 7% of gas, sa gas saving. And you know, with the current prices of the gas, how important this is. So these are a uh, few examples of uh, what we can do with uh, big data analysis. And I'm sure you have already some ideas in your processes. Uh, just to tell you what ASTBDA solutions uh, can do for you. Uh, basically, we have three levels of uh, solutions. The first one is typical consultancy service, uh, just using big data and big data as uh, as a tool. So uh, for this level of service, we gather the data from you. We analyze with our uh, data tools and uh, with our process experts, uh, we can recommend some uh, solution to solve issue or improve your KPIs. This is one go uh, let's say services. The second solution is to have the software on your uh, own and to run this software. Then ASTBDA will uh, install uh, the software in the cloud and the link in the cloud for you. Uh, configure, help you to configure the data, data warehouse based on your business context and uh, implement automatic uh, data transfer. And then your teams will be trained to use the software and start analyzing the data. But then this stops the uh, service and your people will develop their own knowledge by themselves. Uh, the ultimate solution is the one we recommend is more or less the same as the, as the previous one. But on top of it, uh, after the uh, implementation on a regular basis, uh, some people from AST technology will visit your plant, you, you will organize uh, coaching sessions with your people in order to have a better efficiency and uh, more regular improvements and uh, more regular problem solving uh, of your teams and uh, having some kind of uh, dynamic in the, in the process of, uh, of, so, of using big data analytics. That's it for this presentation. Uh, I hope this was uh, interesting for you. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any question, do not hesitate to write them and uh, we will answer to you uh, because this session was recorded and uh, used for technical issues. 
Thank you very much. Have a good day.